Well, hello, Psychology's Instagram Live. It's great to be here. We're going to be talking all things speaking with confidence now. And we're going to have some absolute top trips, tricks and tips to help you feel confident when you speak. What's quite funny today is that I'm in a theatre space, partly because my house is next door to a building site. So we're, we're in a space which feels very comfortable to me. And actually, it's quite nice not to be at home and stuck next to all the builders and the noise. Hi, Anne. Nice to see you. It's really... Oh, and Pitch Coach, nice to see you and Joanna. It's great to have some friendly faces. So my name's Caroline Goida. I am a voice coach. And my thing is helping people to speak in the theatre of life. And I have a belief, which is that we are all good speakers. We're all talented speakers. We all know how to do it. We can speak confidently with our friends. So it's my belief that if you can speak confidently with your friends, you can do it anywhere. You can do it in front of a thousand people on Zoom. You can do it at a conference. You can do it in a difficult situation. And so what I want to do today is share really three top tips, game changers that are going to help you find your confidence when you speak. And the reason I'm calling them game changers is that recently someone said to me that I'd been a game changer for her in a job interview, that she gained some confidence that allowed her to get a job after three or four times of really not managing to. So it made me really think about game changers, and we're going to talk about them today. Hello from the Netherlands. That's exciting. Nice to see. I know psychology is you've got a great global audience. It's worth saying before we really kick off that anybody listening, if you want a copy of Psychologies, if you go into their link tree at the top, you will get a free copy sent to your house, which is rather marvellous. I think I might sign up myself, because it's a great magazine, isn't it? So, okay, what I would like to invite us to do, and just to remind, I'm Caroline Goida, I'm a speaker coach, we are going to be talking about speaking with confidence. What I would love you to do is to add your questions as we go. I've got three top tips that I'm going to share. We've got a whole half hour, so it'd be really great to have from you some questions, some things you really want to know. So feel free to pop them in the chat as we go. And I like all these people joining. Very exciting. Nice to see you. Hello, Fatima. <laughs> so bit of framing on voice. I was a voice coach for, I've been a voice coach for 20 years. I started training in the year of 9-11, so that's 2001, isn't it? I'm ancient. And I remember when I started um, training in voice as an actor and also learning to teach voice, it seemed like the voice was a bit of a mystery and that speaking was just something that happened to you and that you didn't have much control over it. But over 20 years, what I've learned is that we have enormous control of mastery of, of how we speak. And I, and I really want to pass on to people the tools that are going to help you to speak with confidence. The real game changes, the really simple things that you can use to help you ace it under pressure. Now, here's my belief. My belief is that everybody can be a good speaker. What we need to do to become good speakers is like what we need to do to play any instrument. We really need to practice. And here's the problem. Most people get so nervous about it that they don't practice. And then suddenly someone says, we need you to speak at a wedding, or you've got to do a big presentation at work, or you have to present in a job interview. And because you haven't been doing it, because you haven't been practicing, it feels horrible. You know, your breath comes up into your chest, you speak too fast, you feel your heart beating so fast you think they can hear it, your voice goes shaky. And so we come away from those situations and we think, I'm no good at this. But that's just not true. You just haven't practiced. Now, this is comparative to me right now because I've been a Londoner for many, many years. And though I have a driving license, I haven't really driven. Now, during lockdown, we've been living out of London, and so suddenly have to drive. Now, in that situation, I can say I'm not a driver because when I get in the car, the clutch doesn't work, and I stall, and I get nervous. Or I could say I just need more practice. And as it happens, when I've practiced, I've gone out every day in my car, I've messed up a little bit, you know, it's stalled, so what? Day after day, you get better. And so what I'm going to give you are three things now that you can do 
day after day to make you get better. And Fatima, I love this question about what should I do with my hands. We will come back to this. So, first tool, this will help you with this question of where do I look and what do I do with my hands? The first tool is the voice is a sensory thing, right? The voice is a product of breath and body. The breath comes out of the body, out of the lungs, and it hits the vocal folds and it vibrates. But speech is also psychological, it's cognitive. And the trouble is that when we speak, we get really locked in our heads, we get really stuck. And so what I'm going to invite you to do, instead of getting stuck in your heads, is to really be in your body. So first rule of speaking with confidence, like first rule of learning to drive, is before you speak, get into your body. Right now, everybody can do this, whether you're sitting or standing, feel your feet on the floor. Feel the air on your face. Feel the clothes on your skin. Feel your voice. Maybe say something to yourself. Maybe say hello. And just feel your voice resonate in your body. The more we can live in our bodies and the less we live in our brains, the better our voices are when we speak to an audience. So that's the first tip. Get into your senses. Now Fatima, I can see, has asked a question about what do I do with my hands? Before you speak, just do something to relax your shoulders. So if you pick your shoulders up to your ears and just drop them down, if you shake out your hands, if you shake your arms, if you release your shoulders, if you move through your spine, you know, just doing a little stretch before you do that Zoom meeting or standing up is going to help you. The more you relax and warm up the body, the more you feel confident when you speak. Because if you think about it, when we're talking to our friends, when we're having a chat, we're not conscious of our hands. And so you want to get yourself set up to a point where you're so in your body, where you're so in your senses, that you just start to be natural. But here's the thing, you know, I was talking about learning to drive. Just like learning to drive, you get to a point where you don't think about it. Getting to a point where you don't think about it takes daily practice. So if you want to learn to be a confident speaker, every day take time to tune into body and breath and voice. And that might be as simple as every day do five minutes of meditation. I know psychology's readers and listeners will be, you know, queued up to that. Every day do a little bit of breathing work. Every day put the radio on and sing along. I can't tell you, or radio, I'm so old school, you know, put a, put a, piece of music on on any device and sing along because if you sing and breathe and move for five minutes a day what you find is that you start to feel more confident when you speak so that's the first tool is really start to become aware of the instrument of the voice now the second tool which also relates to driving when we learn to drive as we get on the road, we can either be focused on ourselves, <gasps> I'm such a bad driver, this is horrible, or we can focus out on the road. And focusing out, camera out, is so much more powerful. It's a really powerful place to be when you speak. But what most nervous speakers do is they walk out on stage or they step up in front of that audience on Zoom or on Instagram Live and they think, how am I coming across? And it's like the camera goes in and it looks at you and it worries about you. And what that creates is a very tight, tense, I'm doing it now, it creates a really tight, tense, nervous energy. So that is not productive. Instead, think about someone that you want to help I learned this from the actor Bill Nye years ago when I wrote a book called Star Qualities about confidence for A-list actors. And he said at first when he started out as an actor, he was really, really worried what people thought about him. He used to walk into auditions and be really worried about how he was doing and if he was any good. And he said there came a point in his career where he got started to get the big jobs. And he realized, watching other actors come into auditions, that what the good ones did is they came in and thought, how can I help? They weren't worried about themselves. They were focused camera out. 
How can I help this producer, this director, this casting director, this actor get the right person for the job? Now, when we speak to an audience, whether that audience is on Instagram, whether that audience is on Zoom, whether it's a real life conference audience, whether it's your wedding speech, don't think about what's going on for you. Just tune in to how can I help this audience? What can I give them that will be a present, that will make them feel good? And suddenly, our energy connects in the right way. We're in contribution rather than a sense of being judged. And it's such a simple switch in your brain, in your body to flip, to go from camera in, oh my God, how am I doing? Not productive, to camera out, how can I help this audience? What can I give them? And to be a bit cheesy, it puts the present in presentation. It makes you feel that you are connected, part of something, rather than you know being judged, being criticized. So our first tool of today is understand the instrument. And our second tool is focus on the audience, not yourself. And if you do those two things, you are already going to have so much more confidence when you speak. Now, the final tool is really to take a moment to take control in the moment. Because what we do when we start to speak is to go too fast. And I see this a lot with people. I spend quite a lot of my working life encouraging people to take a pause. And it partly goes back to the idea of the instrument. What most people don't realize is that all speech is out breath. And if you want to speak with confidence, you need to harness that. Because when we get nervous, what we tend to do is we gasp the breath into our upper chest. So I might, if I demonstrate it, it's, hello, I'm Caroline Goida, and I'm a voice coach, and I'm going to be talking to you about speaking with confidence. Now, I'm overdoing it because I want to demo it. But what you can see is that if I start to pull the breath into my upper chest, that starts to make me feel nervous. Because when do we pull breath into the upper chest? We do it when we're feeling scared. So a really, really simple thing that you can do to feel more confident when you speak is when you speak, on every full stop, close your mouth and just take a moment. Take a moment to take a lovely, low, deep, relaxed breath. Really let it sink down, really enjoy it. It feels like an age to you, but the audience just don't notice. And if you do that, it really starts to give you the control back. I've been talking about driving. I've been talking about, as a Londoner, getting back into a car during COVID. And I've been talking about how practice was the thing that really helped me. The other thing that really, really helps in driving and in speaking is just to slow yourself down. Because it's nerve wracking driving out in a car. It's nerve wracking speaking in front of an audience. So sometimes we just need to take a moment, put the brakes on, slow ourselves down, and give ourselves a moment of ease. And suddenly your system feels so much more centered and you start to have more control. Now I'm really curious to know, does anybody have any questions? Because I'm very happy to take some. I'm just gonna scroll back up to see. Oh, there's some great questions here, so I'll answer them. So Rajdeep has answered, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, has asked, how can you stop yourself from fumbling for the right words? That's a lovely question. Right, so first thing I would say is, if you've ever looked at a transcript of speech, speech is always a bit messy. It's not like writing. It's never neat. It's never tidy. It's always a bit loose. There's always a few ums and ers, and that's okay. So firstly, Perfection doesn't exist in speech, unless you're doing Hamlet, okay? The second thing I would say is that searching for words is actually really interesting for an audience to watch. And if you need a moment to think, give yourself a moment. Because actually people will enjoy a moment themselves to consider what you're saying. So my note to you would be, if you feel yourself searching for a word, Allow yourself that moment, and in that moment, remember to breathe. Because in breathing, what you do is you allow your system to feel relaxed and centered. And when your system is relaxed and centered, it's oxygenated, the brain can find the right word. 
So take your time. Hope that helps. Final thing I would say on that, she said adding one, is that if it's something you haven't said before and you know that you might get nervous, practice it on voice notes. Take your phone, find the voice notes app, write down a few bullet points and just practice saying it, practice making it fluid. And then what you find is that under pressure, your brain has access to the words in a different way. So yes, in the moment, take your time, but also before you speak, practice it, say it a few times. Oh, Joanna, great question. Techniques to feminize voice, that's fascinating. What I would say in terms of um, techniques to feminize voice is to play with range. So if I glide down through my range, if we go, you can do a little pitch glide in your own voice. What you'll notice is that there's a whole depth of range. There's the gut voice, which has a real kind of resonance and power. And um, if you tap your tummy and go more, you kind of get into that gut voice. And then there's a chest voice, which is a kind of ma sound, which is very warm and very... Uh, it's got a sense of connection and presence. And then there's a head voice, which is a kind of main nye, 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 nye sound, which is much lighter and brighter. What I would say to your client, now I'm not going to lay down any rules about this because some women speak in their gut voice and some men speak in their head voice. So this, isn't, this is not a kind of set of rules as to how different genders speak. But as your client is exploring feminizing their voice, I would encourage them to explore the heart center and the head center. And the work of Chloe Goodchild is really, really interesting on this. She's um, a teacher who does a lot of chanting work. So I would really recommend that your client explores Chloe Goodchild's work. And I would recommend that they explore the different, it, it, it's a little bit yoga, it's about the chakras, the different kinds of chakras and where we voice through. Or if that's not their thing, I would encourage them just to explore gut, heart and head and to sing. You know, in their shoes, I would be putting music on and I would be finding female artists whose voices I liked and I would be singing in their range and just exploring that range. Does that help, Joanna? I hope, I hope that helps you. Um, Fatima's question, in a large room full of people, where should we look? Oh, interesting one. So this is real life, isn't it? Not Zoom life. First rule when you get out on stage in front of a big room is make sure that you've connected with the people at the back. I mean, that's a really good rule for theatre. A, a, you know, a good actor will always have a sense of the circle and the back of the room because those are the people you might miss. So first up, have a sense of giving the whole room a hug. And that's energetic as well as where you look. It's a sense of really filling space. And then the next thing I would say is divide the room up into a quadrant, four quadrants rather, and imagine that you are a little bumblebee on a field and the field is full of flowers and take your attention to a flower in the back right quadrant and then take your attention to a flower in the front left quadrant and then take your attention to the front right and the back left and as a speaker just make sure that you honour each different flower in the room and that you give the full room your attention. And if you do that, what you start to notice, and I have a terrible habit of this, is that we honour one side of the room. I don't know why, maybe it's a brain, left-right brain thing. I always look to the right of the room and I forget the people on the left. So I've trained myself when I'm nervous, look at the left-hand side of the room as well. You can often see that on video. If you watch yourself back as a speaker, you'll notice that you look a certain side of the room. Now I'm just... Yeah, just checking in. I'm in an amazing theatre space today called Omnibus in Clapham. So if anybody is a Londoner, just definitely check it out. It's brilliant and it's opening up again soon. I feel very comfortable in a theatre space somehow. Now, Vic, do you have any tips for speaking on video in Zoom calls? Oh, yeah, big issue. When I speak on the phone or audio to groups, I perform so much better than when I'm on video. You know, I've been talking about this question this morning. It's hard, isn't it? Right, first thing I would say on this is don't limit your belief. 
So my feeling about Zoom is that Zoom is broadcast. And we don't say, oh, you know, TV is worse than theatre. We just know that they're different media, okay? So when you're on Zoom, you're on telly. And telly requires a different kind of energy. Telly requires that you can cut through the screen, that you can connect with an audience through a big piece of glass. It's almost like a goldfish tank. And it requires more energy. So my tip, and actually, I mean, I'm doing it. You can probably see if I show you. I've got a stand. Um, I've been working. It's been my game changer for the whole of lockdown. I've been working with laptop stands because I find that when I stand up, my speech, my energy is already higher. What I would also say is don't just speak to the screen so that if I just talk to the camera here, you probably notice that my voice, my vocal energy drops, my physical energy drops because my head starts to head towards you. It, it lowers energy. So stand up if you can and then just like you would in a room, just think of sending your energy to the back wall. Think of really filling the room. Now that's not shouting. Shouting would be really trying to talk from here and pushing your voice. It's just a sense of where's the wall? And you let your voice gently travel to that wall, no matter where you are, in your bedroom at home. And that gives you a different kind of energy. The other thing I would say is use gesture. There was a really interesting study done about a month ago, just, before lo just when lockdown was going on, I think, maybe two months, a bit before. Oh, God, it's, it's way, no, we're, we're way, way into lockdown. Sorry, we're six months in. Time has flown. And what it said is that the voice is really helped by gesture because when we gesture, we use the diaphragm, we ground ourselves, we breathe differently. So when you're on Zoom, stand up, use your hands. And final tip, this is a real George Clooney one, talk to an old friend. So when we are an audience on screen, you know, whether you're watching Graham Norton or a movie, we're kind of watching it, if we're watching it at home, in our own space. So talk to us as an individual. And what George Clooney says is always imagine that you're talking to an old friend. So when you go live on Zoom, just picture a dear old friend that you're smiling at and talk to them. And what it does is it really lifts your energy and it makes people feel so much more connected to you. So stand up, use your hands, dial up your energy and talk to an old friend. Oh, thanks, Joanne. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I do do private coaching, so just um, contact me on carolinegoida.com. It's such an interesting area, um, this, this idea of, of um, gender and voice, and there are also people who really specialise in it, so I can help, but I can also recommend in the voice world some people who major in that kind of work. Great. Now, I'm keeping an eye on time for psychologies. We've got a few more minutes. So I'm just going to check, do we have any more questions? Have I missed anybody's question? Let's have a look. Um, so Fatima's question, what do I do with my hands? Relax your shoulders. Um, fumbling for the words, let's just go up. Have I missed anybody's question? Does anybody have a question that they would like to add? Please do feel free. Oh, Tatiana, um, a student in my public speaking group that's a paraplegic, fascinating. Have you ever worked with someone like that and how to coach when the body is out? That's a great question. What I would say is that the instrument of the body and the voice is, is just, I, I'm in awe of what the instrument of the body and voice can do. And I think that even though they may not have access to the whole instrument, it's quite incredible what we can do with even a portion of the instrument. So I would be encouraging them to really dial into the sensory awareness of what they have access to and to breathe into the spaces that they have access to and to enjoy really using the parts of the instrument that they have access to. It's a funny example, but I remember Mark Rylance playing um, a character in Jerusalem, and he had, you know, or when actors play um, Richard the Third or something with a, you know, a hunched spine, it's about really finding the power of the voice within the frame that you've got, and there's always possibility. So get them into their body, get them into their breath, just get them to find what is there, and then get them to really enjoy that, and that they will start to. 
it's the, the awareness is everything and and that starts to change the system when you really pay attention. And I think it might be easy to say, oh, I, I don't have access to that, so that's that. And I think that's never true. Breath opens up physicality. Breath opens up voice. Thank you so much. That's a really interesting question, Tatiana. Good. Now, so I think that's all for our questions. And it is coming up to half past, so I'm going to make sure that I round up. Top tips for speaking with confidence. I'm Caroline Goida. I'm a voice coach. This is a psychology's audience, so we are really thinking about mind, body, voice. The first tip, become aware of the instrument. Notice how your voice works. Start to play with it. Every day, breath, meditation, sing. If you do those three things for even five minutes a day, your voice will improve. The second thing is focus out. When we focus in on ourselves, when we worry about judgment, when we worry about criticism, things really start to go wrong. If you can focus out, if you can think, how can I help? If you can be in contribution, not competition, your voice, your power will naturally kick in because we love to help. That's, how we, that's what we do as humans. And then the final piece is really take control. And understand that the voice is out-breath. And if you can look after the in-breath, if you can take a nice, relaxed, centered in-breath, low and wide into the body, not high up into the upper chest, your voice will thank you and it will open up. Try out those three things every day. I promise you they will make a difference. Now, one thing to say, because this is psychologies and we love psychologies, if you would like a magazine, all you have to do is go to Linktree at the top of the profile and they will send you a free magazine to your house, which is marvellous. And also just to say that I've been Caroline Goida. I am going to be here every month at the end of the month at 1.30. We're going to be talking about speaking up in meetings. We're going to be talking about speaking up in interviews. We're going to be talking about speaking up in big public speaking moments and presentations. And we can actually talk about speaking up in any context that you're interested in. So if there's something you would like me to cover, do ask me and I will bring them in. Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. I love the questions. See you in a month's time. Bye-bye.